Hello everybody, this is Matt's Level Retrospective. Um, this is a stream in which I want to go back through a whole bunch of old levels that I made up to two decades ago and just see what I think about them. Um, I'm a, I have been a professional level designer and game designer in the industry for almost 17 years now. I'm the design director right now at, a, at Hangar 13, which is a 2K studio, but I'm not really here to talk about that. I realized that as I'm looking into what shaped me into the designer I am today and you know the sensibilities that I have that a lot of it really came from me making doom levels and quake levels and then working my way up to the industry making you know levels for professional games as well and um, it kind of culminated in a GDC um, talk that I did at the game developers conference this year and I started talking about how doom really taught me a lot about game design so I realized you know what it's probably fun to just go back to those old levels it's not like I'm going to completely rediscover them. I think some of them I've played during the intervening years. You know, it's not like I'll completely have forgotten them. But it'll be interesting to just go back and see what I think about them. And, you know, how Matthias in 19, well, it's still 2014, thinks about something that he did in 1996, for example, and so on. So, pretty much the levels I want to look at are all the levels that had some sort of release. I did a whole bunch of things beforehand you know everybody tinkers I did like little basic games and I worked in the 3d construction kit I worked in unlimited adventures and the bot style construction kit making role-playing games and so on but none of those um, works really ever got finished and they never really got published to Fido.net or to the internet so um, I figured I'm gonna start with everything that actually had some sort of release and um, the Troopers Playground would be the first of those releases. This is the first, it's a nine level Doom release that I made. Um, was heavily influenced by, you know, playing Doom levels at this point, or at that point in time. It was heavily influenced by what the Innocent crew, which were Panzer and Worf, or Dennis and Thomas Muller, um, were doing. They had created something called Obituary Optic, um, which was a 16 level partial conversion where they made 60 new levels, they made new enemies, new weapons, and so on. And at this point, I'd made one or two levels. I'd kind of gotten just used with the editor. I streamed, I think, a week, a week and a half ago or so. I was streaming that very first level, which is included in TTP, just as a bonus map, kind of discovering how I'd learned the editor. But um, this was the first release then that I figured was good enough to, you know, stand on its own. And it was influenced by Optic in that, I realized I couldn't do what those guys were doing because they were more experienced than me and they were two people instead of just one. But I realized, okay, let's make something that at least has some sort of, it's not just standalone work. So I wanted to make my nine maps. I added one new enemy to this, uh, did a few like small de it and patches and so on. And, um, and that's, you know, how this came to be. So what you can see on the screen here, and I'm not sure if you completely can completely read it or not. I think that's going to depend on my um, Comcast connection as well. But um, is the is the um, readme for this? So I'm just going to, you know, you could download it later. I'm not really hopping too much onto it. It's called the Tupas Playground. It was created. This version is version 1.03. Was released on um, March 15, 96, using German. Um, Okay, it looks like the text file itself came in really low risk. That's something I can look into later. But yeah, um, it just has some general information on this. It says that I used what at DCK, Doom Construction Kit, even though I don't think I really used that a lot. But I did use Deep and I used new what tool and the hack it to create it as well. And, you know, I made everything from scratch. This actually does have some information into how to install Troopers Playground because you had to uh, apply a the hack it patch, which changed some of the things in the... Um, some of the monster behaviors and so on. You also have to use new what tool to merge the sprites that I made from a new enemy. Um, and so it was a little bit complicated. I had a batch file for it, which I'm not going to get up on screen right now, which tried to do all of this um, for the user. But there's just some disclaimers in here saying, you know what, make sure that um, you make backups of your Doom what and of your Doom EXE and so on, because just in case, you know, something might uh, might be broken. And then if you want to reach me, just down here, I did have a, I had two email addresses. This was 96, right? So I wasn't really that active on the internet yet. Um, I had one which came through Fidonet, 
which was my mailbox, my local mailbox, leonardo.cam.reinruhr.de. And then I had my um, university email address, which is the one I used for the next, I don't know how many years, Matthias Borch at uniessen.de. But really, Fidonet was the way in which you could really reach me. So instead of, you know, th there's some interesting stuff in here, how I'm spelling doom 2.exe, for example. You probably can't see that on the stream quite, but the D and the M are both capitalized because, you know, that's how you spell doom in, in the logo and so on. Um, but yeah, I don't want to harp on this too much. What I did want to show real quick, and let's see if I can actually get this up and running here, um, what it was, uh, DOSBox was crashing for me a lot and to show you what I actually made these maps in. So I did everything in what ad, and that's just because that's the first editor that I really downloaded back then, but it's also the one that I got most comfortable with. It had a whole bunch of back um, drawbacks, and ultimately um, I moved on to, I think it was Def after the fact. I used Deep even in this mod to apply new um, textures because it couldn't load um, custom mods. But um, this is what most of these um, maps were made in. I actually registered this after a while, but I don't have my old directory around right now. So, you know, I didn't have to wait for this NAC screen every single time. It's made by Matt Ayers. He actually lived just down the corner. I live in, um, you know, in Novato right now, which is north of um, San Francisco. And Livermore is just around the corner here. But, um, so yeah, he made the editor that I used to make all of the maps that we're going to look at in, um, in Trooper's Playground, certainly. And just to give you an idea what this looked at back uh, like back then, it was like 640 by 480. Let's see if it can actually... I had some problems earlier where it wasn't showing the entire resolution on the screen. Yeah, so, so you see how or you're missing some, um, some areas down here, but pretty much everything looks like this, right? And um, so if I wanted to load, for example, let's see, let me load what? I can do this, load what? Um, go out of here how do I get out of here so I haven't used this for a long time yes it's gonna be interesting for me just to understand so if we want to load map one for example this is TTP map one this is what it looked like I had this just 14 inch monitor which you see in that picture that I use um, to start the stream with it's 14 inch it was not flat at all it had like it's more like a fishbowl really um, but so I was kind of hunched over like this and making all these maps when I was working on it so as we're looking at the map, for example, and I'm sure this ran a little bit faster, at least back then, but honestly, I have no idea. This is what the start looks like. So if we're looking at the line depths, for example, you can probably do this. This is what they look like. You can show, see which direction they are pointed. Like Doom, if you never made maps for it, of course, was all um, was all um, 2.5D, right? So it was just a top-down view. And here you would define, there are various ways in which you could do it. There were actually nodes on the side here, and then there were line defs between. And in something like def, you have to place the nodes individually and then connect them to create a line def. In here, in this map editor, as well as, I think, Doom Construction Kit, which I never really used much, um, I think you could directly um, draw rooms. And I don't even know if I could try to do that right now. I can try to draw a room. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't even seem to work. Which is fine. Um, well, you know, I can... Oh, no, there's something there. You can see it's starting to come up now. can move things around and so on. But yeah, so this is wh how all of these maps were made. And you just made sector after sector. You connected them. You assigned a texture. And you could align that a little bit. And you could... Um, I can probably do this right here. So as I'm looking at one of these line devs, it would theoretically tell me, although I don't think it's doing it correctly, down here, and you can see that, I think, on the stream anyway, there would be a texture map, uh, a texture list. And then you had things. So these are imps, for example. And I can change the direction and so on. So I'm not proficient in this anymore, really, right? But it gives you an idea of what the editors looked like back then. This was all in DOS, of course. And just to give you an idea, I don't want to hack on this too much. I really want to get to um, playing my my levels. But this is how you could go in here and see how these maps were made. Um, something that I find interesting, and again, I don't think you can actually see it on the stream because it cuts out. As I'm looking at individual sectors, they have a um, they have an integer ID 
attached to themselves and that's down here just out of sight for you this for example is sector 30 so you could actually go into these maps and you could see how you made these maps and where you started because these sectors would slowly start you know it was pretty much a trail it was a history of where you started and where you ended what the first and the last thing in the map was that you made so it's interesting to go in here. This is sector 89, for example. Now, sometimes that's somewhat inexact science because sometimes you split sectors after the fact and so on. Well, that's interesting. And then finally, and that, this is actually something I was interested in. Let me see. Four different um, difficulty levels as we start playing this very soon. So there's a whole bunch of imps in here, which you can see. And then there's a Baron of Helen here. And I'm wondering if... Yes, and I don't know if you can really see it. I can't move him right now either. So I think there's a Hell Knight for the lower difficulty level, and then and again you can see it down here, and then there's an extra Baron of Hell for um for ultra violence, which is what we're gonna use. But yeah. So let's get out of um water just to give you an idea. I might try to load um Zeph or Def up at some point. I never used DU, which was the original original um DOS, edi uh, well, DOS Doom editor, but um, they were all pretty similar in how exactly um, how you made stuff. And yes, you would put notes down individually, and then you would connect them, and then you would make a sector out of them, and so on. And a certain zen to it, really. <laughs> okay, so let's go out of this and let's go into Doom. So here we are. Um, for some reason, it's not fully full screen. This is something I'm going to try to figure out for the next stream again. Um, I had it all set up correctly until just before the stream and then something happened. But I think this is certainly good enough. So I have it set to 16 to 9 right now. It's running at a higher resolution than what it um, would have been. You know, it was 320 by 200, of course, when you were playing Doom back then. But um, I think this is still pretty accurate in how, what Doom looked like back then. So first of all, let me bring some music back here, just a little bit. So this must be the number one music I've listened to through my career. Out of all the games I've played, this music right here, I've probably heard the most. It must be that way, because when you were working on Doom maps, and you started um, testing them, they usually weren't part of this complete um, package yet, right? They weren't packed up into Memento Mori Watt or TTP Watt or so on. So we'd constantly play them as level 1, again and again and again and again. And this is the music that played every single time. So after a while I might have used a different watt to get some different music, but I think I'd, I must have listened to this the most. I think second most must be um, Ultima 5, the Amiga theme, the one music um, piece that was in Ultima 5 on the Amiga, because you know that is still stuck in my head to this day, but this must be number one. So here we go. So this is what TTP looks like, and you know what, instead of talking too much about it, let me just play it and then I'll tell you a little bit after I'm done with this level. So let's make sure that as we're starting, I'm pretty sure it is, um, okay, but let's just make sure we're playing this correctly, right? This is how you played it. And so here we go. Different sky dome. Bunch of imps. Hacking me from the beginning. This was very obviously, I think this has a good flow to it and good um, difficulty to it and so on, but clearly it was for the experienced Doom level, uh, Doom player. It was not something where I was slowly easing you into stuff, especially not on this difficulty level. There's a red key back there. You know what, I'm not gonna kill all of these guys, because honestly, I feel that um, it's probably gonna be easier to kill them after the fact. So let's go in here. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. So something you should not expect is me playing as well as a really seasoned Doom player. I haven't played this for a while, I'm also playing this on a laptop, and I'm not playing it... I'm actually using my original keyboard um, layout, I'll tell you about that maybe a little bit later. But so the one thing I will do quite a bit in here is save the game, because I feel... There is a chance I'm gonna die in this, and I think that is entirely cool. Okay, so can I just save this? No, let's just make a new save game. TTP stream. And then I'm gonna save over this. Oh, and then I got hit in the <laughs> face right there. Right, so there's a whole bunch of imps in there. This is what we just looked at, right? These are the sectors. Oh. Come on, dude. Oh, 
I love these kind of double window setups where you get to see something then you see it after the fact. Or you get to see something, you get to engage with it, but then you only see it after the fact. It makes you... It makes you anticipate the level. It immediately creates this stream of different desires and different things that the player is tracking. Because as I've seen this now, actually let's first look at this. And there's a key. Interesting, okay, so I, I know now where the red key is, I know where the um, yellow key is, which is cool. But so, as I'm coming in here and I'm looking at this map, there's two exits here, and they're both equally weight, right? They're both doors which I could open, but because I've seen everything on this side already, I'm a little bit conflicted, but I've seen two things on this side, I've only seen one thing somewhere all the way over here where those initial ins were. So I'm kind of, even though that's not authoritative and some players might do it, I can probably guarantee as a level designer that I would say 80% of all players or so will probably go this direction. Wanting to cash in on some of the guys I killed here. That was a good shot on a single belt. Get this guy. You know, and uh, go this part of the map. So, I like those little touches that you get out of Z Doom. Like um, those blood spreads. Those, of course, were not in the original. Generally speaking. Now, I don't even know all my secrets anymore, by the way. If somebody has played all of this, you will be able to remind me every so often of a secret that I might have missed. And look at that. So that's the um, Baron of Hell who only shows up on this difficulty level. You might make an argument that having a guy like this appear on map 1 is way too early. Well, for one, you know, it would be a Hell Knight on normal difficulty level. And again, we have to remember that this was not. This was for seasoned Doom players, and this really was for me more than anybody. And I was trying to slowly ramp it up. I wasn't trying to throw everybody at you early on. I was using a lot of the base enemies, but um, I was certainly gonna use some of the higher weight enemies early on, so that I would actually have some sort of, um, well, some way to um, shape the difficulty. So these sh these kind of fake um, lights. This is how you did sectors, right? You can even see how it's going around the corner and the angle probably never actually works perfectly because if you look at this it might kind of work so that was a different sectors and that's something that more um, experienced doom level is designers started doing oh yeah. so i think I, I shot this accidentally this was the idea behind it as you fight these guys you shoot this trigger and that automatically opens up the um So we're gonna save every so often. There's a <coughs> chainsaw, which I would really like. So I think this door was closed, I couldn't actually open it from the other side. Which is, you know, if you're looking at it through the eyes of a more modern experience level designer, it's bad affordance because I have the same doors opening and not opening, and the only way for the player to find out is to actually use them. This is a bit of a problem. Oh, wasted shot there. First time we see. Goals. What were they called, the sprites? Somebody remind me. I should know this. And I don't. I'm drawing a blank right now. Somebody on the stream tell me. Any more guys here? That's right, more guys. So I feel that... I think it's pretty terrible right here that you can't look around this corner. I could have done something there. Um, but I feel that for the state of the art, for what Doom levels and what 3D worlds looked like at that point, all of this was good. It had good detail. It had some light, it had a little bit of visual interest and so on, it had nice textures that were aligned correctly and so on. So, you know, looking back at it today, of course, there isn't much here. But, um, I forgot about those guys. <laughs> and that's what Doom is really all about, right? Monster closets opening. Yeah, so looking back at this, I think, you know, for Doom, this is cool. This looks good. I don't really feel that my maps gained much more sophistication in terms of visual look as you're going on. You know, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think this, this will be this, yes. Oh, almost. Um, now we'll see as we go on and we look at the Requiem, we look at Memento Mori, but I feel that, um, that this is already pretty much everything you're going to get in terms of visual, um, fidelity. Now there might have been some more complicated setups with much more detailed or bigger rooms with more visual interest that way. Can I open this? Yes, but of course I can't go through. Um, but, yeah. 
This is pretty much what it looked like. What it's gonna look like. Some of these textures here are um, custom textures, of course. I didn't make much that was new, so I made the Sky Dome, and the Sky Dome was actually not something that I made from scratch. This is a sky that I stole from a Spelljammer game. Anybody remember Spelljammer? It's a um, D and D module, right? Or it's an entire world, and there was a game where you got to play this. Um, this world, I think, there was only ever one. It was part. It was a little bit like Elite with um, RPG elements, like SSI, um, tactical combat, and this was just in there as a BMP, um, as a BMP file. So I might have made this tile using um, deluxe paint, but that was pretty much it. And I think this entire start um, was influenced, well, it's actually a little bit of a story. I'll tell you this afterwards, after I'm done with this level. There's a little bit of a history here as to how I ended up with this start area, how I ended up with this um, backdrop and so on. But some of the other um, textures that you see here, like this ground, for example, was just a modified, um, modified a metal theme and so on. Of course, what you see as, as the status bar here, because I figured I wanted a custom status bar, was something that I created, again, out of textures that exist, but I modified it, so I made all those, um, well, I made the panels by just modifying it, and I made all of those uh, numbers from scratch. And I just gave it a little bit of, I felt, what this, that's nice. I gave it just a little bit of a special feeling, which is nice. So I don't think any of the textures which are in here, especially if you don't know Doom, are going to stand out at all. You wouldn't even know that they are custom made. Oh, and here we go. The first Kaku Demon. Oh. I love the differentiation here, by the way, and this is something that if you... I'm going to give you a link at some point. I'm going to talk about it in detail at some point. Um, the enemy differentiation and the prioritization choice that you get out of the enemies in Doom is something that has stuck with me for all of these years. Where there are clear priorities, but they're not always clear to each player. They might be custom, or depending on who which player plays it, that actually guide in how you attack these enemies. And as you're attacking guys, you might change your plan that you had immediately because a new enemy enters the fray. Here, for example, I'm going to take out the hit scan guys immediately because those are the guys that can hit me and that can hurt me. This Hell Knight is probably not going to do anything to me, you know, because he has missile weapons and I'm able to actually strafe around it. But this is something that Doom was incredibly, incredibly good at. And the weapons complemented that as well, right? As you're looking at this Kako Demon, for example, he has a high paint chance, so I'm using this uh, machine gun to actually go after him because that way he can shoot at me. And I was talking to John Romero at a party at GDC this year, and exactly about this, and he said, they went the other way around. For me, it's all about the enemies, and I get entry into this through the enemies. But they w get, went into it through the weapons, and for them it was always the weapons first, and then the enemies complementing that. Either way, though, you get combinations that are really cool and complement each other. And, um, yeah, I think this game is incredibly good at that. Okay, so I have both keys now. And that's pretty much it, except that, haha. Something opened up, so I'm gonna take out a few more of these guys on my way back. Nice. And that's pretty much the entire map, yes? Yes, I'm looking around. Yeah. So I can go back and use my red key. No, this is something I played before to check, so there's one quick disclaimer I'm gonna give you here. This is not perfectly capturing what TTP was doing because the dehackat patch is not working perfectly. So I created a new enemy and you're gonna see him just, just around the corner. But unfortunately, the way I have it set up using ZDoom right now, I do not get the correct sprites when he's attacking. So you're gonna see what this guy actually is. I replaced the um, SS guy from the secret levels because I was not gonna use those guys anywhere. Um, but So he's gonna look a little bit disjointed and weird. But here he is. When he shoots at me, he looks like a Nazi, unfortunately. Um, but so he's a modified Nazi, obviously. And he's actually pretty much of a pain in the ass. I'm going to get rid of him. Um, but he was a... My idea was that, hey, this is a Doom Trooper that had gone over to the bad side. He got killed. Because you know how many times you die when you're playing this. Um, you know, he's one of those guys. And he turned into a zombie. And this is how he's, he's attacking you. 
And so I didn't really use him a lot. I feel like in hindsight I could have used him a lot more. Obviously in real TTP you would now see a dead Doom Trooper on the floor and his I had his brain spill out um, when he died. So that was a kind of gruesome um, um, death animation. And yeah, so this guy you might see um, coming up again. That was my special enemy. So that's map one. Did I find all the secrets? Let's see. Alright, so, see I didn't find all my secrets, I don't even know which one I'm missing, so <laughs> I'd have to go back and find that. I created a new um, custom background screen for this as well, again it's pretty simple of course as you can see, but you can see it's TTP. I like the fact that it has like an identity, right, that's the idea behind this. So, before I go on, just to give you the quick backstory behind that portal in the beginning, before I made TTP, before I made Doom Levels, I worked a long time in Unlimited Adventures, which was this um, SSI Gold Box um, construction kit where you could create your own AD&D adventures. And I created something, I was heavily influenced by Pools of Darkness, which is one of my most favorite, um, m most favorite games pretty much, even to this day. And I was trying to cre recreate that, and I was creating, recreating the map of the Moon Sea region but it was floating in space. This, in turn, was heavily influenced by one of the um, dimensions from Pools of Darkness, where you go and, if you know Monda, he is one of those semi-gods, actual deities, in the in this universe, and in Pools of Darkness, you actually go to this um, alternate universe where he has been put into internal sleep, and he's this huge body just floating in space, and you go in there to um, defeat the evil lieutenant, of the you know main bad guy from pools of darkness and you're pretty much walking across his body and you go into his nose you go into his brain you go into his heart that's where the boss fight is and so on it was a really cool environment but so since then i figured okay i'm gonna do something that's floating in space as well and i took the moon sea region i made it float in space and um, all of the rivers were pools of lava now and those kind of things and that's why i used this backdrop this sky backdrop for the first time it was the backdrop right there so as I started making Doom, just thinking back about it, I think I was heavily influenced by that. For one, just using the Sky Dome and this like kind of space, um, space background for the Skybox. But then also how you see that initial um, platform floating in space, I think that's heavily influenced by Pools of Darkness as well, because it actually is this portal, this teleporter floating in space. So I think that's how all this came across. Let me look at the stream real quick. See if there's anything here to talk about real quick. So yeah, thanks for finding um, and actually downloading TTP 1.3. There's a story behind why it's 1.3. I'll talk about that later. But yeah. Um, so the quality is considerably worse than the test stream. Okay, that's good to know. That's something I'm going to try to... I figure for Doom, we're going to be okay. Um, it might be because I'm doing it during the day. My Comcast connection, my internet connection just isn't good enough. I hope we can get by. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there were lost souls, of course. Should have known that. Um, you couldn't jump in any of these levels. And in fact, you could break this if you played in modern Doom engines. And you can look up and down and you can jump. You can break a whole bunch of these level flows. Uh, but yeah. And then finally, there really are no Nazi soldiers in... <laughs> yeah, no Nazi soldiers in D&D &D space. You're right. Now, ideally, nobody knew it was D&D, &D, of course, at that point, And nobody knew that... Um, you never saw the Nazi soldier, right? You only saw my Doom Trooper. But yeah. So I should probably go and, you know, I'm still pretty new to actually streaming and, like, getting good at this, so I should probably call out who said that. The people are actually following along on the stream right now. Um, thank you for watching right now. I will put this on YouTube later, so hopefully people who are missing this right now, because they're working or, you know, they just didn't know about this are going to watch this later so this is map two um i don't actually know when i made map one it must have been sometime towards the end but not you know sometime in the middle of all the levels i made for ttp this was the last or second to last map i made i was pretty much done with all maps and i only needed to create two more or one more and i thought okay i'm just gonna well not buff this out but i'm gonna quickly do this and you know i thought i can do it on a weekend actually i was going to a land party where we were playing a whole bunch of doom and 
well, not Quake yet at that point, Doom and Warcraft 2 and Command and & Conquer and those kind of games. And I figured I'd actually work on it, but again, spectacularly failed. But this is one of the last levels that I made then for this, um, on this level pack, and I don't think I had much inspiration. I think I just kind of went along and, you know, we'll see how it works out as I go through this. There wasn't necessarily inspiration behind this. This was really, like some levels, we're going to see some of them later, were really levels that had an impetus. They had some sort of motivation. This one was just me kind of trying to make a level, so I had enough. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's a bad level, by the way. It might not be one of my favorites, but, you know, it's, I think it's a tight, nice little level. I just, um... That's the memories I have of it. It was the level that I still had to finish so I could ship this level pack. That's really the way I remember this. Blue door here, which I think you can see on the map in Z Doom. I don't think you saw that in normal Doom. Like you didn't see the actual blue color and red color for those doors, which is important. Oh, you know, it's nice. Nice little thing. This was one of the textures. I think I just recolorized to have a, another brown kind of brick. Of course, this was all palletized, right? So you had to um, work with just like, I don't know, there's probably 16 shades of brown or so for all of Doom that you could use for this. And this opened this doorway right here. Yeah. A lot of those um, enemies you see there, where there's just a single Sarge, um, well, Lieutenant walking in, are made so that you had to shoot them and all the other monsters in this sector would wake up because that's how sound actually propagated, right? So a lot of them are bait. If you don't kill them immediately, then these guys are not aware of you. The way you would teleport everybody in, by the way, and there were different ways you could do it. I think the actual original Doom level designers always create an actual connection between the room where the teleported monsters would be in. So you would see like little on the on the corner, for example, up there, you would see a tiny, like, two pixel wide or so little opening. Um, what we figured out then making these levels is that you could actually combine sectors, and you could make two sectors in two different, that were not in the same space, the same sector. And so the sound propagation would work accordingly. I haven't saved for a while, so let me save. Um, but yeah, so that's how sound propagation and these guys actually reacting to you kind of worked. So let me see, can I go up here? Oh, okay. I told you, I don't remember all of this. Oh, first Mancubus. Not prepared at all, it's probably good that I saved. Oh, oh. So let me see if I can run past this guy, yes. One of the big problems you always had in Doom is that the guy would be stuck because he would stick you somewhere because he couldn't jump over him. So now he's not necessarily a piece of cake, but he's certainly easy enough. Okay. So all of these are trap rooms. And what does this do? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, obviously I have to go to both sides. Uh oh, please tell me I have another ammo for pink pinkies coming in. These were just kind of like standoffs. Whenever a guy like this cornered you, you didn't have the you didn't have the minigun. You couldn't do anything but just try to kill them before they killed you, which is fine. I think them rushing you every so often is good, but that's why you would certainly save enough <laughs> in Doom levels. Okay, is there a secret in here that I might remember? Nope, or I might not remember. All right, let's save again. I'm not really that afraid for my life, but I certainly don't want to have too much dead weight and where I have to replay a certain part of the stream. Okay, so I have the blue level, uh, the blue key, perfect. And again, this was like a Cedo, right? He's the guy who's there to make sure all of these guys wake up. Of course, he couldn't look up and down in Doom, mostly because Tarmac didn't want you to, you could in Heretic, it just, you know, it skewed it, skewed the view to the point where it just didn't want you to do that. So I feel like a lot of these kind of, like, elevated platforms and so on, they had to be at a level where you could actually see the monsters, otherwise it became very 
unfair very quickly. And that's the cedar again. Let's ignore this guy. I think I can go over here and pick up some ammo, yes. And then I get to the red. Oh, and there's my guy. He didn't say shoot stuff either, by the way. He actually had like a grunt hooked up via the hackett. But, um. None of that works, unfortunately. I think at least I'll get the idea. I think the big mistake I made in all of this level pack is that I didn't put several of them together. In my mind, they were these kind of like scary guys that you would see every so often you would try to take them out but they're not really all that dangerous to you so i should have put several of them in various various areas and just treated them like a normal enemy kind of like another guy who's differentiated against the sergeant and the lieutenant and the uh, machine gunner so you're not actually going to see these guys enough i think that's certainly something that you know going back i would change so this is a double barrel shotgun, every, every Doom 2 player's dream. This is the gun that you wanted to have all the time, of course. So um, that's why it's presented pretty prominently here. Just like set up as something that um, you definitely want. He's stuck. So there were ways in which you could let set up line deaths to make sure that guys would not come towards you, but it's a little bit weird that these guys are stuck in here. That just be the way it is. Okay, so I don't trust that at all. Well, I, I think I remember what happens here. I think I'm going to go the other way around first. Oh, and I can't. See, that's where affordance would be nice again. If I had one clear door and Doom just in general, like nobody was doing that, right? But one clear door that says this door cannot be opened by the player, you don't have to run all the way up to it just to understand that, oh, wait a second, I cannot actually use this. So, let's see. Oh, and I guess I broke the trap. <laughs> I think as you run in there, it opens up, and you're stuck down here, like this. Yes, and it does this. The idea being that um, you're kind of stuck in the middle, and you're getting pounded from multiple directions, while you're trying to keep as much of the 100% health that you just got as possible. I just kind of cocked that up. I'm sorry. Not doing the... Well, I mean, it's the level. It's not like... You know, I, I have this philosophy where the player is never at fault. It's never the player's fault. It's always the level designer's and game designer's fault. And that's something that you have to learn the hard way, especially if you become a professional level designer and you're watching a playtest sensor on that. If somebody's not doing what you thought they would do, you don't blame them. You go back to the drawing board and you figure out why they're not doing what you thought they would do. Players usually want to play along. There's always players who want to grief the game in some point and are going to try to figure out how they can break various simulation boundaries and you know where the edges of the simulation boundaries are in the first place and that's okay you have to support all of that but it's never the player's fault. So right there it's really Matthias in 1996 who didn't do a good job of making this trap perfectly. Let's see what this does. Okay so this lets me get back out which is cool. This is important though. Okay, so just let me get back out, and then I'm assuming this door back here opened up. And it did. Funny how that works, eh? So all of these rooms are, I wouldn't say they're uninspired, but, you know, they're certainly, it has a certain feel to it, right? These are not epic, epic kind of rooms at epic kind of levels. I never saw myself as that level designer in the first place. There were some people that we had on Memento Mori 2, for example, or in, I don't know what his last name is, who made these beautiful beautiful um like spaces in the doom engine these are just a lot of square rooms you know i think they're intricate enough and they are laid out well enough to keep you engaged but you know yeah, could i have done more here with some lighting to spruce this up definitely um i just didn't maybe because i didn't feel like i had the time or i didn't want to go back to it or whatever the reason was but yeah i could have done more here Still, I think it holds up well enough. I'm not going to. I'm not getting distracted by how ugly these rooms are. I think that's what it comes down to. Like I'm not ripped out of what these spaces are because they are not in line with what Doom, as the standard right now that people knew about, um, represented. Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to be another trap that Matthias back in the day created. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, okay, so this is going to be a little bit trickier. So this guy takes exactly 
Ten shots? Come on, shoot him in the back. Okay, I'll take this guy. This guy takes exactly ten shots with the single barrel shotgun if you hit him perfectly, or five with the double barrel shotgun, which is one of the reasons we want the double barrel. As a advanced Doom player, oh, well, just as I say it, I get hit, of course. You were able to strafe around this guy pretty well, and this was not really a challenge. But, you know, I'm assuming that at lower difficulty levels, you get a Hell Knight, just a smaller cousin who takes exactly half of that um, damage would be in here. And for the advanced Doom players, they got a challenge. So, two. Okay, so I do one and one. One of the things, one of the, I don't want to call it a shortcoming, one of the things that as a Doom level designer you always had to contend with is that each line death could only do one thing. Like, you would go here, you would set this wall as a line death, and it could say, for example, raise stairs, or it could open a door. But it couldn't do things at once. It couldn't do two things at once. So you either have to be creative with it, I'll show you later in some of the levels, or you have to put two um, triggers in here. So I'm going back. Oh, something opened again. For one, I think I just saw a secret here. Cleverly disguised as a lid wall. I'm not sure I'm using the Mancubi well enough here. I mean, he just got me, so that's good. Would make the argument that maybe they need to be in a more open space. I mean, there is a lot of strafing that I have to do here to actually make sure these guys don't kill me, so there's something to be said for the placement. But they probably work better in a bigger space. Yeah. Did we ever figure out what these Mancubi are actually saying, by the way? I'm sure that's got to be on Doom World somewhere, on a wiki page somewhere, what these guys are supposedly saying before they attack. There we go. <sighs> well, I could have used that before I started attacking these guys, because I could have used it maybe to get this shotgun and then take him out. But, well, so is life. Such is life. Okay, so I have the red key now. Let's keep going. Ah, and here we go. And then I fall down. That's not good. So these guys are not becoming aware of me. Now let me see if I can actually use this to my advantage in any shape or form. Oh, I'm going to use this to... Ah, and then my... That yeah, was weird. Why did my invisibility not work? Why did it stop working? But I wanted to get a nice shot at this guy so I don't get tons of lost souls, of course. As a differentiated enemy. And again, I forget the name, which is terrible. Like the guy who spits lost souls. They were perfect to differentiate an enemy uh, encounter and create varying levels of prioritization. Giving an opinion on who you should go after first and who you should go after later on. Because, you know, he was kind of ticking time bomb. If you didn't take him out early, he would just keep populating the entire space with more and more enemies. Oh, ouch. Let me get some health. There's another guy there, isn't there? He just shot me in the face as I killed him. Let me get some health back. And so, different theme here. Obviously we're going into kind of industrial theme from a clearly kind of medieval or whatever you want to call it kind of theme. As Neck I said earlier, Neck K. How do you say your name? Neck K, right? <laughs> um, said in Doom it was easier to actually um, mix and match a whole bunch of these. And you still have to be careful. You couldn't just do whatever you wanted to. But yes, it would certainly gave you the opportunity to do these kind of mix and matches. As long as each area was clearly defined and you weren't just like being all over the place with how you lots of health here, good um, you weren't just all over the place with how you mixed it you could actually do this where now you're in the industrial waste area which is exactly where we're going to go back to so once again you know like the way you would set all of this up you would show the player something that she wants and then you would make her work at it and figure out how to actually get to there so let's see which one of these actually opens this one doesn't open and I think this door opens again probably should have Oh, first Revenant. Who's kind of broken, isn't he? Or is, did they actually set him up so he should, couldn't come out there? I'm 
Don't know if he's broken if I was stupid that I didn't let him out because he's not getting used to his full potential here. But I wanted the double barrel shotgun for him. But yeah, once again, like, if I'd been smart, and if we as a level design community had been smart, I would have had a different door here that says this one opens to a switch, this one opens automatically. This one still doesn't open because. Oh. That is kind of. I want to say lame or cheap, but unfortunate because it forces me in here having to dodge these guys. You can see I'm always taking out the hit scan guys first, the shotgunner and the machine gunner before I go after the imps. I love that about Doom. Creative. I might just not have set the lower and upper unpacked on this one. You see how this texture actually goes up and down. And I don't know if it does it in standard Doom or maybe just in Z Doom. It's kind of cool to actually see it move the elevator in a way. So this is probably... Oh, it does not spawn a trap. I was not hard on myself here in the player. Okay, so I need to get back out. Necky? <laughs> so Necky. I'm gonna say Necky. I think Necky is good. So yes, Pain Elemental are the guys who spit out um, the um, Lost Souls. So here I have need to concentrate on playing this for a second because it's all of these timed switches right here. We have to go in here and I have to go in there and then I think that door opens right there. So let's do this. And let's make sure I... Yes, just in time. I have no idea if a less experienced player would have been able to do this. This might be pretty hardcore as a level design trope or setup. Ah, yes. <laughs> These are just three switches. I actually like this one. I think two of them open traps. One of them actually does what I wanted to. This is the wrong one. Luckily, I have the double barrel shotgun now, so I can take care of this guy a little bit easier. But if I could, I would probably randomize this. Or, you know, I would actually do it in such a way that the last switch always is the one that actually does what I want it to. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I think I, think I still like it for a game like Doom. I think as a setup, this is totally fine. This is a lot about traps and guys back spawning you or you just taking out guys. I think it's fine. Um, of course, you can only do this kind of conceit in a kind of gamey game as Doom, for example. You know, it's, it has a very dungeon-like feel to it, right? Where if I'm going down a D&D &D dungeon or something like that, I totally am fine with these kind of setups. And ultimately, I think Doom is very similar in that regard. Yellow key. And yeah. So level design is a lot linear and single linear single player level design. I could write a whole book or do a talk on non-linear open world and so on level design. Even though I've never done it professionally yet, but you know, like single player level design is a lot about flow control, right? It's a lot about creating individual points that the player can track as a as she tries to finish the entire level. So you want smaller goals all amounting to a larger goal. And of course with the door here and the um key here. This entire setup is very much designed to do exactly that. Oh, hello there. Those guys definitely had their... There was a flag to make whether those guys can hear you or not when the sound propagated. And this guy definitely had that flag set to not, not listen, not hear you. Circle strafing is another one of these awesome doom tropes that we have it again. I feel like it's definitely possible to circle strafe on console controllers. People do it now, but there was a while where none of this was possible, right? And this is also, you have to remember, this was a little bit of the Wild West as to how people played these games. I talked about a little bit in the intro stream where I started playing Doom with the mouse from the beginning, but I was never sure if this was actually the best way to play it. So I actually played with the keyboard a little bit. I played with a... Um, joystick when I got one for a while, thinking that this was actually a superior way of playing it. 
but um, it never was. So people were really good circle strafing on the keyboard. I don't think it was possible really on the joystick. Doing it with the mouse immediately, being able to circle strafe and take these guys out and you know dodging behind cover and so on was definitely possible. The other weird little anecdote or you know coincidence that comes out of this, there was absolutely no standard for how you would um, control these games. And I think in original Doom, the movement and strafe keys were bound to the cursor t um, keys, right? Instead of um, instead of W A S D. Because of this, I was actually I pretty much made up my own keyboard um, mapping, and to this day, I'm not using the standard. W to go forward and S to go backward thing. I use W to go forward, S to go backward. So my ring finger is on W on S, constantly going forward or backward. And then I'm using E and W to strafe left and right. So my index finger and my middle finger are actually the ones I strafe with. And whenever there's a game, maybe a small indie game that didn't have time to do anything in terms of um, keyboard customization, and it only has the standard W S A D layout. I am lost. I cannot use it because I am not using the middle finger to go forward and backward. I go forward and backward with W and S. And in fact, initially I actually did W and A where I used my pinky finger to go backward. So I used two different um, fingers for that as well. And there was a whole period while I was playing Quake where I was finally getting off that, and it took me forever to actually because I kept losing in deathmatch all the time wean myself off that um, but yeah so this this is weird I think in normal doom you couldn't actually pass under these guys if I remember this correctly and I think only Z doom actually added a way to run over, over guys okay so what is this it's pretty terrible in that there should be some sort of marking on the floor that shows you which ones go up but hey I made it oh great Thanks, Matthias. I hate you. Oh, I definitely hate you now. <laughs> I think it's actually a decent trap. But unexpected. I have no idea I did this. And luckily there's enough help up here. But yeah, this should have a different color on the floor, for example, so you know if you're standing on it or not. And back to 90 health, so that's good. Luckily, well, and I think this is actually designed by purpose, I would never put guys that have ammo that could be picked up in these kind of situations where you felt like now you want to be able to go up there and get the ammo. Uh, only ever put guys in there that had missile weapons that I could not pick up, so the player was not inclined to actually try to go and um, get the ammo and the health. So I'm assuming this opened this and this. This is another custom texture, by the way, I created for this. Again, there's nothing fancy about it, but it just creates a kind of different look from Doom, just in slightly subtle ways. <laughs> that one is good. I forgot about this one too. And I think the actual, the way that this was set up, of course, is that there's the exit right here. And then if you shoot the guy, you're almost certain to hit the exit. Um, the switch which is here, which then opens the real one. Alright. So I think I'm done here. I'm gonna go and get myself one more health pack so I have full health again going into the next level. I just feel like I can be greedy like that. So I think there's some health back left here that I did not pick up. But yeah, so I didn't remember a lot of this. It's actually, I think it's a cool, tight little level. Nothing special about it, but you know, some of the traps just surprised me. And I think that's what Doom level design was all about. I always made sure that a room had a certain theme, it had a certain trap. There was some sort of cleverness. Um, you know, where there was a connection, there was a cool lighting trick, there was something about it that made it more than simply a square room. Sometimes I just barely did that, but I think, you know, that's where this level actually succeeds. Save again. And yeah, you know, and that's why I feel that just looking at this entire map and zooming out to see where we can see all of it, it actually has a nice layout. I think there's a certain poetry to looking at your maps, like, in overhead view and looking at it after the fact, you know, and everything fits, fits fits together. If you're looking at the TTP bonus map that I looked at in the very first stream, it didn't have that, right? It was just a pure, you know, kind of linear, everything is all over the place. 33% of secrets, wow, I actually lost a lot of knowledge as to what is um, in this level. And that's okay. And 
26 minutes to play this. So, you know, we'll see how far we go here. I want to go for about an hour and a half or so. Um, I don't want to do too much on one stream. We'll see how many levels we get today. If I get through four, I think that's good. So let's go back to the stream. Just get some of the... Let's, um, back to the stream and see what people are saying. There's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, and so this, like, Matt, this is S SRC Matt, which is Matt Boland, somebody I work with on Star Wars 1313. And he says, you know, a great point about player ma manipulation, because ultimately that's what we're doing as designers, even though it sounds bad. And I think it's part manipulation, it's part... <sighs> yeah. It's player psychology, right? I think manipulation is as good uh, a term to use as anything else. And that you're trying to shape an experience. You're never trying to dictate an experience. But you're trying to be, you're trying to give up this conceit that you're fully in control of what a player is going to do, because you don't want that. But you certainly want to be somebody who entertains and shapes the experience. You want to have it across a certain spectrum, right? You want to be a certain delta between two different extremes and the player is somewhere in the middle right there. And so you can kind of predict what players are going to do, but you're never going to be sure of it. And if you open yourself up to it and they surprise you, I think that's really, really good. The key is to look at what signs you're sending to the player that told them the incorrect way the place was preferred over the correct way. Something Matt is saying as well, yeah. A lot of it is feedback, a lot of it is actually telling the player, like giving subtle hints. And you as the designer should never necessarily be present or visible to the player, but the game itself internally should always give the player feedback as to if they're playing the right way, or the not really the right way, obviously, the optimal way or a good way or not. So let's keep going. Yes, you do have like little T-Rex arms in this. Invisibility only works against hit scanners, that might be true. Okay. Jay Ballantyne, which I think is John Ballantyne, another guy I work with on 1313, Star Wars 1313. He's an awesome designer and programmer. Um, he says he had no idea you could play with the mouse for the first six months, which I, I believe. And I met some incredibly good death matches who only used the keyboard. Like, Yes, ultimately I think you were better with the mouse, but yes, there are a lot of people who just used the keyboard and were incredibly proficient with it. Okay, so let's keep going and let's go to this level. This is map 3 and this is the second map I ever made. The second multi uh, single player map certainly ever made. And um, this one I ultimately deemed good enough to be included in this mission pack. Now we can actually see I went back and I did a whole bunch of, you know, like touch-ups on it as well. But we can see if this actually reveals itself as something that I did earlier than those other levels that we looked at earlier. So the idea here is that, well, I don't even need any ammo because I'm full up. But the idea is that you're making a meaningful choice between trying to get some ammo versus, you know, getting your health back. Or, you know, losing some health but then being able to get your health back here. I'm not really interested in it. Oh man, I hate myself. <laughs> oh man. If you start this, well, I mean, that, that's why the shotgun is there, right? If you start this from scratch, if you did not come in here using, um, like, having gone through the levels before, this would be really difficult. But now I definitely want some health back, so let's side strafe, which makes it a little bit faster. And, you know, I got my health up a little bit more again. Let's see. Okay, so here we have some a bigger space. And I like how the um, revenants in the middle kind of modify the encounter. Oh, and there's a chain gun up there. Oh, I got him in one shot. Right, and what you're trying to avoid them. This is similar to what you have in a bunch of snipers in like, well, both first person and third person shooters these days. You know, like those snipers that have these um, laser sights that you can see on the screen, these red laser sights, and they're constantly suppressing you. And whenever they're in the scene, they're not really adding to the differentiation of the encounter so much as they are modifying the way you're playing. Because, you know, you always have to stay 
behind cover for example you can only peek out every so often that's pretty much what these revenants are doing in the middle there right i have to kind of play this map this room of this map on their terms not on my terms i could try to storm into this room and try to take everybody out and try to dodge everything that is i guess a valid strategy but ultimately they are dictating this encounter and only at the end i'm usually taking these guys out so that's what they're doing i like that a lot as an encounter design as something you know like to me a lot of level design in doom was really about you know was about the traps was about the flow and so on but a lot of it really was about um is this a can i shoot this no i actually have to come here later it was about inc encounter design it was about making interesting combat in these kind of spaces so this is probably one of the first <laughs> i think the initial version of this map i made didn't even have these kind of light fixtures in here with the like fake lighting in here but you can see how it's kind of boring right i can go in here i think i can also do this yes and this must be z doom this would not have happened in doom i'm assuming yeah well i think i'm just not picking it up because i already have full ammo okay and let's see where we can go Oh, I think this was one of a, this is a, I believe, quite the elaborate um, secret that I set up, which I like a lot. Usually you would just do pretty simple secrets, because, you know, they all take time, and it's only so much time you had to add those on top of the actual map. And this one is actually like a double secret, where you can see parts of the map, and you have like a real... I have so much ammo, I can just spam a little bit with the double barrel shotgun here, I feel. Usually I'm trained to always go to the single barrel shotgun when I didn't need the bar double barrel to preserve ammo, but yeah. And these guys are not good at getting at me in here, right? Which is good for me. But I have so much, well, I had so much ammo, I just lost all of it. You see how quickly that goes. I um, figured I could just splurge a little bit. But you know, this is a somewhat involved room, which has a secret in it, you know. And like So yeah, I think I did quite a bit of work on this. This might actually, there we go. Yeah, let's go back to single battle shotgun. Um, so this is quite a bit. And I'm pretty sure, and um, let's see if we can actually find it. I actually think there's another secret in here. And I think it might be one of those secrets that you only, yes. So it's here and the texture was slightly misaligned. But I think it's one of those secrets that you would only find if you looked at the map after the fact. Which I kind of like. Because as you go on to the rest of the map, you would at some point go and get to this point. You would see this sphere. Take this guy out, I can do this early on. See the sphere and look up here and look on the map and try to figure out how can I get up there. And you would kind of deduct from just the level layout how to get up here. Let's see if I can take this guy out if I should just wait until the end. So this advertises part of the map that is much later, much further down the road. But I think there's a secret that's kind of cool. Especially because there's a little bit of player story here, right? Not everybody's going to find this and people actually have something they can talk about. Um, like in terms of how they played the level. And so do I want this Yeah, you know what? I want this ammo and I have enough. I have more health than ammo, so I'm going to trade one against the other one. Okay, let's keep going. Hello there. Ah, uh, Echo Demons rising from the deep. I think there's some really cool setups I have in later levels, not in TTP, later on, where they're actually coming out of pools of slime and pools of blood and so on. But there was always a coolness to them, kind of rising out of the abyss. And also spacing. I just got hit by one of those fireballs, I can't believe it. Electricity balls, I guess. Um, they also pace the combat encounter just a little bit, right? And that they're entering themselves into the battle just a little bit later. And you get to decide. So here, there are two different ways in which you can play this map. And I'm going to play it this way around. And this is something that I don't think I'll be able to sufficiently demonstrate. Now I can save right here, but there are two different ways. This map kind of circles back on itself. And if you go one way, then the other way is blocked. If you go the other way, the other that way is blocked. I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, you're going to see this soon. And I think this is where this actually is a cool map. Even though I made it early on. And I think it has some things. Like I think something will come up to right here. Um, which might be a little bit... Whoa. Cool. I had no idea. I actually had no idea. 
Um, like these kind of traps, for example, right? Which is, um, this is a pain in the ass. I'm not even advertising on the floor where they come down. Um, so as a trap, this is probably a little bit, so I think the way this actually works, let me try this. Go in here, and I think I can, yeah, let's see. One of these guys I think is dying right now because I am stomping him. And this guy down there, you see him? I think it's kind of cool, but it's a little bit... Let me run through here again. Oh, oh! Ouch! I paid heavily for that. <laughs> oh, man, and I just picked up the second... I just... I just, um... Lost out on 24 health points. Because I was at 99, I picked up the 25. But, okay, so be it. But this is how you can actually take these guys out. So, and that's something somewhat cool about it. There's also something somewhat crude about it. And again. Oh my god. Well, I'm gonna keep playing. I'm committed to the premise of you know, I don't want to reload. I only want to save as a safety net. And I think I'm actually killing everybody here except for that guy. And if I run over here now and all these guys are dead I can take this guy out. I don't even think I had to do this by the way. It's just purely to get rid of everybody. But yeah, so there's something somewhat crude about it. There's also something cool about it. And I think what I should have done for sure is change the lighting or even the floor for each area where you're safe and each area where you're going to get squashed. Because I think that might have saved me as I was um, getting squashed twice here. So let's keep going. So this is pretty simple. You can see how this is the second map I made because this has a lot of... Like, you're looking at these kind of textures, and this is actually very similar to a TTP bonus that I showed you earlier. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was my fault. That's not entirely true, but uh, this is certainly where Matthias from the past was very, very hard-ass. Well, I think that's something I would not have been able to, should not have been able to anticipate. So, haha, now that I know this better, let's try this again without losing all his health. Again, this is Doom, right? So I think some of this is okay. That's how we made levels back then. This is what you... Uh, that's what you... Um, what you kind of expected from these games. But, you know, what? Uh, some of them... I would not put this in a modern game. Like, the player's always right, and you should never die by trial and error. You should always have a fighting chance, and I think right there I did not have a fighting chance. Okay, so let's keep going on. These guys are gonna die on us. Let's save again and already prepare for this by, sorry, going to the double barrel shotgun and kind of looking this direction already because I did not mean to, I don't want to um, curse a lot on the stream. It kind of comes naturally to me, especially because I'm from Germany and like the F word and the S word and all that. Those kind of taboos don't really mean anything to me, but I'm still trying to keep it down, but that right there was a holy fuck moment. That just wasn't right. It's kind of cool, but god damn it, I hate myself. Okay, so how do we keep going? So this circles back around. Can I open this? No, these are just... So this opened up. This wasn't open when I was in this room earlier. Um... It opened up now. So for one, I'm spawning guys in here. Hello. Three of them. Nice. Challenge. Right here. So this opened up something. One way in which there's so many anonymous switches in these kind of levels. I think one way in which, like a saving grace and uh, kind of telling the player, hey, something happened give some feedback was to spawn enemies because they must have come from somewhere unless they clearly spawn in you know they must have come from somewhere and this is kind of how you are communicating the state change that just happened right i'm not even sure exactly what the state change is though it must be in here ah oh, yes it's in here look at that this is kind of cool isn't it like this entire room transformed and in fact this is where, if you played this level the other way, I, I, I'll leave this as an exercise to the reader, pretty much. If you went the other, you know that star-shaped room? Oops, gotta be careful here. Um, you went the other door, 
Now look at it, because I think we should at least go all the way down there to kind of 100% the level. You would have gotten to this area the other way around. You would have, let's look at it, because, you know, I can't get here yet. You would have come all the way from here, you would have gone in here. I think there was a trigger here, which I'm closing then, so it's not there anymore. But you can see how this wall might be slightly different. And it would have now opened all of this up, and I would have played the other way around. But yeah, so this level really can be played. I'm pretty much playing it backwards now. I think that's cool. Has a somewhat circular layout. Not a lot of Doom levels, you know, did that. So, hello there. How do I get your stuff? I would like the armor very much, please. I don't even know how to get it, though. So, I will have to check. Of course, there's always the chance I just have to jump in there and then try to, like, do an obscure elevator. But I'm going to give myself more credit than that and assume that there's actually a better way. Ow. Better way to get to this. If that is the case, though, I don't know how. Let's try it, because, you know, I wouldn't put it past me. No, that's not it. So now you die. That is definitely a trial and error that you didn't do. So there must be a way to erase this bridge. There must be a bridge. And I have... <laughs> See, I have no idea how to do it. So sometimes you just... Ah, you just run around. Oh, no! That is not good. Sometimes you run around and you find every... Because there's no... Yeah. This is the... This is the wall, right? I guess this wall does, does look different. It looks every so slightly different. So there's a doomed trooper. That's what I called them. That's why it's called the trooper's playground, right? Like all these troopers went in here and... Well, died. Probably not a good playground. It's, you know, a pretty deadly playground. But um, there's one of them in here. I should have just used so many more of them, and it would be nice if these guys actually worked. If you're joining us late for this stream, there's a problem with the way that the um, installation works for this. So these guys were over... I was overwriting the Nazis, but um, because it's broken, they have the wrong sound effect, and you only see the correct model when they're not shooting at you. So in actual TTP, the way I released it back then, they would have been completely conclusive, just these... Um, Doom Troopers, which went out, died, and then um, turned into zombies. And when you shot them, they would collapse in front of you very um, satisfactorily, um, with their brains spilling out. Mm. Okay, I should have used them much more, way more, all over all over the map and I didn't really. These guys actually again because I treated them a little bit like a special enemy that you were supposed to be really afraid of but honestly they're not that and I didn't really recognize it back then. Um, I gave them some other abilities which were supposed to make them more fierce and more differentiated. For example I think they, they can pick up there's a flag and I don't think Doom ever used it. There's a flag in the Hecate you can set where enemies can pick up objects. So the idea was that these guys would walk around and they would pick up pickups, you know, like drop guns and health and so on, and you'd be really afraid of that. Except, of course, A, nobody ever knew that was happening, because there was no feedback for that at all. They had no signs that they were about to do that either. And, you know, it didn't make that much of a difference. Even worse, I completely screwed myself, because they would pick up key cards as well. And there was a bug in the first or second version of this, this is why this is TTP 1.3, um, where this guy would pick a, up a keycard in one of the later levels, I think map 8 it was, and the keycard was never there, which is like really nefarious, right, because the player might never have seen it, the guy picked it up, you keep looking around forever, thinking there must be a blue keycard here somewhere, but the guy just picked it up and you never actually <laughs> got it. So, you know, I kind of screwed myself in multiple ways here and it didn't really work that well. I think this guy as just a guy that you see in groups and a lot of you know that is just differentiate like mixed in with all of the other guys so here you go that's the blue door and this is the way I could have gone all this way around. This guy just as you know in groups 
differentiated against all of the other surges and lieutenants and so on would have been really cool. So you can see the connectivity all the way down to that secret area we saw earlier. But let's go back now and let's see how Meek actually coming in this way worked out. So obviously I didn't have to do all this backtracking here. At least I don't think I did. Unless I was actually triggering something. This was purely, I think, for completeness sake. Where you could get 100% and lots of... Um, Oh, that's right. That's how I set it up, and this is actually really good. And I'm kind of breaking the flow here, but not really. Doing this trigger right here, which I would have gotten to either way I go around. Did something in here where I now can now go to this pedestal, and I had to backtrack anyway. So this is how this was set up. This is kind of cool. So you could either go one way, come from this direction, and then you had to backtrack that way. Or you came from that direction, did this, and now I would close this off, and you would have to go... You know how this is closed off now? Now the only way to backtrack is this way? It would have gone the other way. So yeah, kind of cool. Just make sure I don't run into lava here. But again, the fact that I, I'm forgetting this and we had to... Well, I had to remember. You guys might have known exactly in your mental model as to what was going on in this map. It took me a while to actually figure this out again. And because of it... Um, you know, let's just level design again. Like, I don't think modern games would do this. Um, I would certainly try to create some safeguards to make sure that the feedback as to what has happened is clear. So there is a red key up here, which I never noticed. You know, like, again, going back to it, I think this key should have been raised a little bit. So I had known about this the entire time and known that this opens this door right here. But hey, live and learn. It still works. Well, hello there. Pretty dark. Can you guys see on the stream? I might bring up the... Well, I think it's fine. I mean, this is supposed to be dark, right? Let's just go with the intent. And why didn't I do this? It would have made this so much easier. So this is where I want to go. I want to go up here. Let's see, there's a poison sign here. A whole bunch of stuff back here. I think I remember the way you can play this. I think this, I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm certain this leads me to the blue key. But, um, the way you got there was a little bit interesting. So you can avoid the, um, slime right here, or acid, whatever it is. I think there's a switch over here, which, theoretically, well, did something. Specifically, does this. So I don't know if there is a secret here that gives me a slime retardant suit, whatever you call them, or not. I think this might just be, and this is where you could screw yourself, and this is definitely where it's bad level design. You just kind of, there you go, it's all the way back here and you can't even see it. And if you run out of it, or you save now and then you, you save after you run out of it, you can really screw yourself. Oh man, well, you know, you can, I'm kind of screwing myself right here. Because, you know, you only have so much time. There's a guy coming, you have to find that switch right there. You have to hit it with your gun to open this up again. And it's all against the time pressure of having this one acid retardant suit. So, I mean, that's the only way you can do it. I think I did something somewhat similar to this, where I actually used slime as a barrier in map 18 of Mentor, Men Mentor Mori 2. And I put four of them in there. But, like, if you play this in co-op, yeah, what you're gonna do? And you know, even there at four weeks, so everybody in co-op could get one of them. The way you really want to set this up, of course, if you were to design this one from scratch, is create some sort of replenishing like, um, shelf or just a re replenishing like spawn spot where these things would keep coming, um, keep coming back. In fact, we did this in Wheel of Time. It has exactly that. Get to there. It has a whole bunch of puzzles that are contingent on you having the right magical artifact, the right Tiangri Al. I like how these things keep filling up again. Nice, it's like every time you think it's done, you have to do more pest control. Um, so, you know, these things would respawn. But that's something, you know, that you can do in here. And I don't think as a level designer I should have leaned on this trope. But hey, I'm talking about it for way longer than it was really worth it, because obviously it worked out for us. You know, and this is not like it's a Sierra adventure from back then, where you had to just keep save game after save game around, because... 
you could screw yourself all over the place and there was a way to not do something early on and then you could not finish the game I mean it's not nearly that bad you could just keep the safe case around here for a 20 minute or so time block and probably not really screw yourself okay I get a rocket launcher awesome and let's celebrate the rocket launcher with the arrival of two rounds of power I don't really think they warned oh there's the one guy up there that I did not kill did I completely refill this? Are there more than one guys up here? Let me look. Oh yeah, you're looking into uh, level in uh, weapon introduction, and I think I'm doing a decent job here. So I think, yeah, these guys are all the way up there. And this is kind of that's why I feel the level design is just a little bit too not really playing to the strengths and weaknesses of this engine because I mean this is just it's kind of bad, isn't it? Kind of terrible, really. That I can't even see these guys. I kind of have to go over here, and even here, they're kind of owning me. To get a better angle at them. So yeah, now I'm down to 19% health. Oh well, that is what it is. But here, I think those guys are too high, and I should have done something about that. Now going in here, there's a switch. Awesome. But yeah, the weapon introduction, I think that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm even. That's the nice magic of Doom. Um, weapon and uh, weapon and enemy design that I'm constantly switching between single handled uh, barrel shotgun, double barrel shotgun, minigun, and now maybe a little bit of my. No, I don't trust this. Yeah, of course I don't trust this. Of my um, rocket launcher as well. Just one? That's it? All you got? Oh, we just didn't come out. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we go. So that's map three. Um, looking back at it again, and maybe zooming out a little bit, I don't want to run all the way back. I don't think you can unhinge the camera easily in here. Um, but I actually like it as a level. I think I did some work to it on top of it. I think it was up, and it's kind of in line with the quality of the other levels that we saw so far. And I found almost all secrets. I found four to five, I guess. And it took 22 minutes. So let's go back to the stream real quick, and, well, let's go back in here and, um, pause it as soon as we get here. See if there's anything I want to talk about. Probably not as much this time. So one thing the Neki said, and I think he said that even during the last level, is that a lot of people either making Doom levels today, I, that's how I'm reading it, you can correct me if I'm wrong, people making Doom levels today or people analyzing Doom levels from back then, they're not really looking at them through the lens of 1994, 95, 96, they're looking at them through a very highbrow kind of standards of today, which I'm doing here as well to a degree, right, but I certainly want to keep these levels in their time period and just look at them as for what they are. I think they are, you know, they work really well for what these games are and what they do. And then John Ballantyne says, you know, yes, it was very maddening that opening or finding a door or finding a switch to open a door and not knowing where that was was maddening in many ways. It's just like that was the style of games back then, but it doesn't mean it was good. So mein Leben, as I said, I'm going to keep saying that again and again because I think it looks pretty terrible. Like, these Nazis are not supposed to be there. They are just an artifact of me not being able to fully merge um, my d hacker patch from back then. There were actually, this is something that Oriolex says, there were, definitely in Doom 1, there were just like sound secrets, right? You would run over something, you would hear a sound, and that would mean that... Um, a secret had opened somewhere, and you had to listen to it and actually figure out what happened there. Okay. F screen, F key on the auto map screen. Let's go back to this. Unhinges it? Yes, it does. Okay, good to know. 
Okay, so I think on this stream we have time for one more level. This is map 4. I made this somewhere in the middle. I really like this map, remembering it now. Um, this was heavily influenced by something that the Innocent crew did in Obituary. It's not at all. It was kind of inspired by that. It was trying to be a map that fit into that style of level. And um, let's just play it and see. warming me up here and these entry areas were always interesting just to see what because he didn't just want to throw the player not always throw the player into a major action or a major large area oh cool i was gonna say so you have to hit a switch here in order to open this switch just open this door but you know so these are always i probably did them at the very end i'd have to look at the sectors but i probably had something where i started building right here so and then throw this in at the end. Yeah. So again, I don't remember exactly when I made this map. I remember liking it a lot. I remember some elements of when I actually worked on this. I don't remember much music I listened to, to making these levels. If you're looking into the um, readme, you're getting some um, like thanks to Dinala Kain, I think, and Skyclad as well, as some of the bands I listened to. But I don't remember specific songs on this one that I was listening to. I do remember like ordering pizza one night while I was making a certain area. I love how making levels, you know, in the way that the brain works, in the way memory, like memory traces are laid, da laid down and retrieved. These kind of things actually, like me ordering pizza is a retrieval cue for me making this map, or maybe the other way around. And how you always remember something was going on in your life or something you were listening to at that point maybe a boyfriend or girlfriend you had at that point um, I love how you remember these kind of things okay, so once again we have the situation here where clearly there's something below here and clearly it's hard to really take these guys out I think there's actually a bug here, which I'm not going to, I'm not even going to save and try to do it. Um, but there's a key, the blue key is up there, and I think you can actually fall into that opening. I thought I made it small enough to where you could not fall into it, but I didn't. So I think there were some people who, you'll see it in just a second, maybe, where you could actually get stuck here. Let's go back up here. This gets me over to this side. So that's, you know, that's where the key is. I need the key. How do you actually do this? Can you jump back over here and it opens it? No. How did I actually set this up? Bad level designer, not cookie for me. Because I don't even know how to do this anymore. <laughs> trying to remember where the switch is for this. Oh, and it might be up there and I have to shoot it. Somebody remember my level better than me? I'm gonna save now, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to do this. This doesn't come out. And in fact, it kills you. See, I even anticipated it and said, no, that's not the way to play this. I mean, this is terrible. Now, how did you actually... I have no idea what kind of pizza it was, Matt. Somebody tell me. How do you actually do this? I'm stumped by my own level, which is making it terrible level design. So let's think this through. Oh, look at that. That is a... I think that's only the secret. It's actually a good secret. It's actually a good secret. You see how many times it actually took me to notice this. But I don't think this is how you actually get the um, key out. Oh, it, that's how you do get the key out. Oh my god, that's not good. So it opens this up. Now I think the actual secret might be... Or maybe I can get to it later. Okay, so now I can run over here and it revealed the key. Yeah, I don't think this was very well thought out. But hey, I'll take it. And keep moving on. Hello there. Kill this guy. Too bad. Doesn't get his 
deserve it spot in the sun. So this area specifically here was, I don't even know which map it was, but it was based on Optic, like a bit showy. So I think there was something in one of the later maps which kind of looked similar to this. Again, some of these, um, the ceiling flats for example, these were special ones that I made for TTP. They don't call attention to themselves, they look very similar, it's just little things where... Oh, screw you! Um, you know, and then you have... Go! Okay, let's save again. I'm not doing well. But yeah, just little, little touches that gave it just a little bit of a... To the seasoned level designer, really. Probably more so even than the player, seasoned player. Gave me an idea that, hey, some of these things are just slightly different in this mod. Between uh, monster and fighting. He took care of the... Machine gunner for me. So, yeah. Oh, that actually hurt me. Can't believe that. So I want to go in this. This I think is a stylistic change that you could do. Not quite yet, but I think there's like a tech area coming up that I remember. So this is the transition into tech area. Just kind of using different brown textures to advertise it and then go all the way. I'm assuming. I don't remember exactly how this flows. We'll see. This gets me up here. I'm assuming I cannot shoot this. No, I have to wait for something to get raised here. And yeah, here we are in Doom 1 tech land. Which is a style I love, and Doom 2 didn't really have it that much. Generally, I didn't like the level design in Doom 2 nearly as much as I did in Doom 1. I never even finished the levels. I think Doom 1 levels were better. But um, I think this is where I'm kind of going back to that style and paying off on it. You know, paying homage to it. You, have, you don't have that many of them in TTP. There's one in map 6, I believe, and then like map 8 is all text style, which was one of the earliest maps I made. Okay. And here we go. Ouch, ouch, ouch. You immediately hear that something happened. And I'm assuming this lowered the bars over here. And raised this, yep. Which in turn now uh, lower these bars. So that's what I was talking about. Gives me access to another switch, which was all the way over here. Don't shoot. And I'm surprised that I'm not setting up combat immediately, because usually the way you did these kind of um, courtyards with overlooking window, of course, was to now spawn a whole bunch of combat that you, as the player, would have to deal with. But I guess I'm saving that because there's got to be something in there, right? We all know this. Saving it for right here. And indeed I do. Just a single Mancubus, so it's a little bit anemic. Okay, I'll take it. Here we got this key. We got a key. Let's turn it on. Instant weapon switching. Do not waste ammo. I'm just pointing it out again because we have one of the hallmarks of good game design. And that it constantly asks you to make meaningful choices. It constantly allows you to have an opinion on what you are doing right now in the game and to reevaluate the situation you find yourself in. Because there is a way to optimize the way you're playing. You feel smart and you actually feel good about accomplishing something. Even though you're just shooting the same guys again and again. Now in Doom they always appear in different interesting combinations, but even though you're doing the same thing again and again, you're doing it slightly differently every time and you feel like you actually had a good, you know, you played the level smartly. So I thought there might have been a, a secret there, but there isn't. 
And the fact that you can get this kind of differentiation and this constant reevaluation and changing of weapons and you know, for different enemies out of just three or four weapons, I mean, that's incredibly important. And you can get that even in today's games. It's harder, especially in games that do not use the Doom aesthetic, which is very more cartoony or whatever you want to call it, right? Where it's very easy to create these differentiated enemies and weapons. But you can still do it. It's much harder and you have to put more work into it. And that's a little bit what I talk about in my GDC talk and not something I'm going to really like lay on you right now. But um, maybe we'll talk about it at some point. Maybe we'll talk about it in context of some of the games I've made. Star Wars 1313 I don't really feel I can talk about yet. Because, you know, we certainly try to apply some of these lessons to it. But I think it's still a little bit too raw and, you know, I signed an NDA. Um, the game I'm working on right now is definitely going to have some of this, but again, I definitely can't talk about it yet. We have not even revealed what kind of game it is. I'll just tell you it's awesome. Like, I'm really looking forward to it. But, um, you know, as we're looking back at this a few years from now, um, it's interesting to kind of go back and talk about it in the context of Doom and what modern games can do. What does this do? Oh, it allows me to progress. That is good, probably. And that allows me to go all the way down here, which I think is the area that I looked into earlier. Maybe, maybe not. Yes. Spawning more guys in, of course. So we know this entire thing is probably repopulated here. So you see the guy? He's supposed to be like this really oh shit moment, and he doesn't... Oh, he doesn't even shoot at me. Just as importantly, he does not even register on the same level as a um, machine gunner. In his, no, in his level of danger. Okay, so what did this do? Because obviously I did not get this key. So I actually missed the entire progression right there. And what specifically? I need the red key. So I was talking so much about game design in general, so I wasn't paying attention. Um, here's an idea how easy it is to actually miss the mark on all this. So what did this do? Did I have to go all the way back? Did it do something like beyond? Yeah. You might... Okay, there's more guys spawning and it's interesting. You guys probably, you know, like just watching this, probably able to track this better than I have been able to. So what we usually do... Oh, that's right. The red key was here. And now I can get the red key. Okay, so... The fact that it's not on the map anywhere, right? The fact that I'd forgotten about it. I mean, this happens to every player. It doesn't matter if somebody goes off on a game design rant or somebody's just like, goes to eat or gets a beer out of the fridge or has to go to the bathroom or whatever. You're gonna forget about these. It doesn't matter how prominently placed they are, you're gonna forget about these um, keys. So the feeling of accomplishment just disappears a little bit because you were not quite sure what to do next and you weren't really driving towards this. But hey, it still works. It's, I don't think it's perfect. It's terrible or anything. Look at that. But um, this is one of those things that I think could have been done better. I think Doom could have helped there as well. Z Doom could help there, or I don't know. There might be a different one like Boom or yeah, Boom or whatever. One of these ports could help by just putting. Um, how do I get back up? Get this. Um, they could help by marking the key locations on the map, for example. Even give you, if you wanted to, and I understand some people are going to scoff at it because it's more modern game design, even give you a marker that like, lives in the 3D world and allows you to track where everything is. But hey, it's kind of what you buy into playing these games. And I'm just bitching at it on a somewhat high level, I feel. This is Doom, and that's what it's like comes with the territory, I guess is what I want to say. Ah, yes. Another fake exit door, of course. Now I'm playing these guys so nonchalantly. If you remember what it was like to play a Baron of Hell early on, for example, or if you imagine a slightly less experienced level who doesn't just strafe left and right, like in a Legolas kind of fashion, just dodging arrows left and right, 
you know, those guys advancing on you and slowly pushing you back here probably actually had a pretty cool effect. I don't think you get the full atmosphere here just because... What's in here? Oh, okay. This actually... Well, let me see up here first. I don't I don't want to finish the level and this might actually finish the level. Oh, you know, I'm... Hey, look, there's a secret in here, theoretically. Oh. Hey, look. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, so you're not necessarily getting a full effect here. Is what I'm saying, I guess, and I'm not doing myself a favor the way I'm playing this. But I can't help it. I have to play this level. I mean, I have to play Doom the way I play Doom. I can't try to pretend. Yeah, here we go. So that took us 15 minutes. Let's go back. Well, let's just get a preview. I'll do this in just a second of what the next level is going to be like. Let's go back to the stream here and see what people are saying. Somebody, John, was actually comparing some of the um, traps that we're talking about here with Legend of Grimrock 2, which I think is very... Yeah, I think it's very applicable, right? Because it does have that kind of old-school feeling. I mean, I have the Beholder, Dungeon Master, and all of those games. Black Crypt, which are like all were games that kind of thrived on this hardcore, you'll figure it out, you have to go and look kind of behavior in the game design. Opening switches DLC. So Necker says that Doom Automap allows you to set custom markers, and... Excuse me? There might actually be a way to set a custom symbol where um where those um like keys and other things might have been i'm not sure if that's true or not i don't think that was true in old doom but i'm not sure i also think there were a whole bunch of things in the game like in old doom alphas and betas that didn't make it into the game that also had things like that um but yeah so i figure this is a good stopping point um, so we can just talk on the stream a little bit, you know, and just do a q and I want to give you just a quick preview. I just went through four levels. I'm going to give you a preview of the second part of TTP. I'm going to do that, um, I'm going to play that tomorrow. It's probably going to take me another hour and a half. So I'm going to give you a quick preview, and then if there's anything else on the stream, we can talk about it. So this was a level which has a very different aesthetic, and I like it for that. It is my marble level, and I'm only going to, you know what, I should go in here. I should have saved the game. You know what, I'm going to use an um, earlier save game to make sure this is exactly what we're going to be tomorrow. So this was my marble masterpiece. And the entire level kind of has this undergone marble and blood theme. I like it a lot, it has a lot of cool stuff. It has these doors, which were not trivial to do. Let's just see through them and so on. But yeah, so um, this is map 5. I do remember specifically which music I was listening to when I made this map. So we can talk about that a little bit as well um, tomorrow in the next stream. But yeah, that's just a little preview. I'm really looking forward to playing this level. So let's go out of here and just let's go to the stream and see if there's anything else we can talk about. So Jay Mickle asks, do I still make um, levels? So yes and no. Um, after I made Doom, so I worked on Doom, and yes, I did work on Moment Memento Mori 2. And Memento so Memento Mori 2 and Requiem, I worked on those, and then I made Quake levels as well. Afterwards, I was a professional level designer, so I made Quake levels, and then I worked on Sin, Unreal Mission Pack, Wheel of Time, um, Unreal 2, um, Rebel Strike, Rogue Squad and Rebel Strike, and um, the, next, the last level, uh, last game I officially made levels for was Dead Space 2, which is a game I want to get to at some point, I want to stream. Um, I worked in a level design capacity, not officially, on some games afterwards. I worked on a project at LucasArts that you will never hear about. I also worked on Star Wars 1313, and I did some of the level design early on on some of the test levels or some of the, you know, high bar levels. Doesn't mean I was the best level designer anymore. Certainly not, and I think there's a whole bunch of stuff I kept learning all the way to, like, a year ago or so. But yes, I've been a professional level designer all the way through my um, career. And um, this is why it's so interesting to go through these levels again, right? Something I said earlier on in the stream, and I might repeat, you know, just... One of the main reasons I want to do this now is because I feel that a lot of what I know about game design these days comes from making levels and being a professional level designer, an amateur level designer, all of these years. 
like have an intuitive understanding, also have an understanding of how the game design departments work together, what the systems design department does, the people who create the weapons, the enemy behaviors, the three C's, as in, you know, jumping around, controls, camera, and character, and so on, and how they serve the level designer who then comes in and assembles all of these elements to create really fun experiences for the player. So there's a lot in there that I feel I learned from being a level designer for, uh, for all this time. And that's why I want to go back to this, because I think this shaped me very much in my development. Doom community is still strong if you feel like coming back and making a few more Doom maps, Jay Mikkel says as well. Yes, I actually am aware of that. To a degree, I'm not making Doom levels anymore, and I have to admit I don't really play Doom much anymore unless I go back to my old stuff, but yes, I'm aware of that. And I think the longevity of Doom 1 and Doom 2 is incredibly important to me, and it's very interesting to me. If we go on into this um, um, game developers conference talk I did, which was a meaningful choice, and I'll talk about it briefly at the beginning of next stream maybe. Um, like that's where I talk about it and try to analyze why Doom is still so popular today and why people keep making levels for it, right? And I think that because as a game, it is an incredible achievement. And even after all these years, you can still play Doom, and there's just so many interesting things you can do with it. Of course, I'm, I, I'm aware of you know different mods and different engines that now allow you to do slanted surfaces and look up and down and jump and do a whole bunch of other stuff you couldn't do in Doom. But I would submit that even if you just held yourself to the feature set that you had available in 93, 94, you could still make Doom levels today that are incredibly entertaining that you know people might play. I did go back and I actually make a Quake level. So I made Beyond Belief, which was a Quake at episode that I tried to get to, um, well, we'll see if we get to it before the new year or not. Um, I made that those levels in 1996 and 97 as well. And um, I did go back in 2008 and started making a level. And in fact, there's somebody on the stream who helped me finally release it because I just kind of slacked off on it. It was called Beyond Belief 2008. It was released in 2013, I believe, or 2014. And actually, we did revisit um, a whole bunch of those themes and kind of went back to making a new level for classic game and trying to expand on the game design vocabulary on that a little bit. But yeah, Neki is on this um, stream right here and he helped me release it. And when we get to it, I want to play through um, Beyond Belief and then I do want to play Beyond Belief 2008 as well. I don't think I ever played Action Quake 2, by the way. I don't think I ever did that, Draco. Um, I played a lot of levels, just standard levels, like all of the Innocent Crew stuff, Soot Tick and Toy Tick, the Evil Unleashed, um, what was it then? Soot Tick, Sudden... I don't remember an optic was was obituary. Played all of you know like Memento Mori and those kind of levels as well. But I never really played mods beyond played Alien Alien Doom of course back then because everybody tried that. Um, but yeah, I never played Action Quake Two. I never played Brutal Doom um, either. Like in Quake, I actually I mean I played the standard levels and I played some mods. I'll talk about that later. But never Action Quake Two for whatever reason. Oh, real? Like, how did you release your level packs back then? So there's a link right now on the stream, which is um, <laughs> I can try to spell it out. That Neki just um, posted to Beyond Belief 2008. I will, when we're actually streaming it, we'll put a link up so people on the stream so people can download it. Um, it's www.quedicted.com. That's Q Q U A D D I C T E D dot com slash reviews slash beyond belief 2008.html probably if you put it into doom uh, into google you're going to find it as well the way we released doom level packs back then though is interesting in that well the way it went for me actually the first stuff i did was only on fidonet or fidonet in germany you call it fidonet right which was this connection of uh, mailboxes which individually called each other up every day polling messages and you had like message groups we had the doom.ger um, doom which was a discussion group um, so i would upload all of my levels to those message um, to those mailboxes specifically and people could actually poll um, files specifically using like specific there were specific programs that would allow you to dial yourself in somewhere, download a file, and dial dial out immediately again. Because you know, back then, especially in Germany, it was actually very expensive to do um, <laughs> to call somebody long distance. But so I, that's how I um, released all of my stuff early on. I initially actually used the ARG compressor, 
I don't know if anybody here remembers it. I think it was a little bit more, um, it was more prominent or in Germany maybe. But so initially when I uploaded um, TTP, it was called TTP ARJ, and nobody used that. Everybody was zipping, right? Everybody was using zip, except for me. So the very first email I got from Jus Schur, who I still know a little bit, you know, like through the internet so today, um, who was running the CD-ROM.com archive, the Doom archive back then, was actually about the zipper that I was using and the, well, the archiver I was using and how people would actually be able to download this. So I zipped it up after the fact and then um, uploaded it again, probably as TTP 1.3.103.zip. For some of the later releases then, so, you know, that's how you did it back then. You put it on CD-ROM.com. That was the one-stop shop for everything and all the mirrors. Even now, um, you can probably find a lot of the um, archives for this in uh, on CD-ROM.com. It's in Walnut Creek. I don't even know exactly what they did as a company. I think they created compilation CD-ROMs of stuff and um, distributed that. But yes, that's where um, you would release all of your stuff and Yoast was the master of um, that entire Doom archive. It was then mirrored all over the place. And then you would just make announcement in various Usenet groups and in various forums to tell people about it because that's the only way. And IRC as well, of course. You would hang out in IRC's channels and tell people about it. But yeah, that's how people know about this stuff. Well, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I don't see anything else on the stream, which is good because I think we went for quite a while. We s went for over an hour and a half, which I think, you know, I'm trying to do about an hour and a half. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm definitely going to do this again. Um, I see on the stream right now, when I do this, you pretty much just see my fist. I apologize about that. I'll try to cut that out. It's like I'm praying at you. Um, but I had a lot of fun doing this. It's actually really great um, going on memory lane. And thank you so much for being on the actual stream. I'm going to upload this to um, YouTube to keep as an archive. And then again, tomorrow at uh, noon, same time pretty much i am going to play the rest of these levels i think i can go a little bit faster to just play levels instead of constantly you know talking about the beginnings of this and then we're going to try to get to quake and we're going to try to get to i want to get to sin and wheel of time for sure because i really love those levels and i want to go back to them so have a great day i'll see you hopefully next time this is a lot of fun and um yeah tell your friends about it and you know if you want to hear more you have specific questions bring them to the next stream and we'll talk about it now see everybody. Die fette Faust. Yes! Die fette Faust indeed. There's going to be a whole bunch of like um, walks down memory lane with various people that I knew from back then. See you guys. Bye. That was a terrible wave by the way. That reminds me of um, a love actually. I have to work on my wave. I'll see you guys.